Have you ever let go of the handlebars while riding? You feel like a pro, but you're not. Your motorcycle doesn't need you. And it's not your skill, it's physics. Years ago, I tipped over while riding slow. And I blamed myself. But now, as a vehicle dynamics engineer, I know better. After this video, you'll understand how your motorcycle can do this and how some bikes are more stable than others. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is the gyroscopic force? I think you've seen it before. Imagine a spinning top balancing on its tip. As long as it spins fast, it stays upright. Or grab a spinning bicycle wheel by its axle and try to tilt it. It pushes back. That's gyroscopic rigidity. When something is spinning, it has angular momentum, or basically spinning energy, and that gives it a kind of superpower. A spinning wheel doesn't want to change its direction and not tip over. Now put that on your motorcycle. Your wheels are like big gyroscopes. At highway speeds, they're spinning hundreds of times per minute. This means huge angular momentum and huge resistance to tipping over. That's why your bike feels rock steady at 60 miles per hour, but wobbly at 6. Heavier wheels make this even more pronounced. You can even feel this rigidity when you ride. Ever try to flick your bike right, left, right through an S-curve? Your bike is noticeably resisting and it tries to fight these rapid transitions. That's gyroscopic force at work. The spinning wheels are literally working to keep the bike upright and go straight. Now I know how gyroscopic forces stabilize you, but that's only half of the story. There's actually a second type of superpower hiding in the frame of your motorcycle. And that one even works when you're barely moving. And I'll show you with a simple tool later. But before, we'll talk about precession and counter steering. Push right to go right. Sounds wrong, but it's how you ride every day. Rigidity is the stubborn thing we just discussed. A spinning wheel's tendency to stay in the same plane. Precession is the funky one. Remember the bicycle scene that I've shown in the beginning? I tried that a few times. And I almost hit on Ava's car and destroyed my bicycle because of gyroscopic precession. I'll show you the scene afterwards. After I explained the basics of gyroscopic precession. And then you will understand why this scene could fail so fast. Now I'm gonna tell you the thing that most other videos are missing out. You may have heard about counter steering, right? The weird motorcycle steering mystery that when you push the right side, the motorcycle actually goes to the right side. So it's the complete opposite of what the motorcycle is doing at lower speeds. But what's usually never explained is, why does counter steering work? It works because of gyroscopic precession. When you try to change the direction of a spinning wheel's axis, it reacts by moving 90 degrees to the direction of your push. This sounds really theoretical, but it gets easy when we imagine a motorcycle. We've got the front wheel spinning fast and then we push at the right side of the handlebars. At low speeds, the motorcycle would turn left now. That's because with our push, there's an anti-clockwise moment on the steering axis. But instead of the motorcycle being turned to the left by the steering axis, the reaction happens 90 degrees later, which is on the roll axis. That's the line connecting the two contact points of the wheels. And there the moment tilts the wheel to the right. Isn't it amazing how the steering technique you're using every day can be explained with physics? And later it gets even simpler, but at least that fascinating when we talk about geometry. And now let's come to the bicycle scene, the point where it all went wrong. I accidentally pushed one side of the handlebar harder than the other, and guess what happened? The bike drove to one side. I slow it down. Now watch exactly what the front wheel is doing after I let go of the handlebars. Can you see it? After I gave the handlebar a push, which was probably too strong on the left side, the front wheel tilted to the left and stabilized itself there. 
ever notice at 100 kilometers per hour, your bike basically rides itself. And the dangerous part, the faster you go, the less you have to do. In extreme cases, there have been race incidents where the rider falls off at speed and the motorcycle goes rides itself upright until it finally tips over. That's gyroscopic stability in action. With wheels spinning fast and no sudden shifts in weight, the bike wants to carry forward and stay balanced. You'll also notice at high speeds that steering feels different. You can't yank the handlebars to turn like you might at parking lot speed. The bike resists quick changes. The upside is that at speed your bike feels planted. As I mentioned before, the speed, the weight and also the size of the wheels have an impact on how big the stabilizing effect is. However, sport bikes usually use lightweight wheels so that the stabilizing effect isn't as strong as with a Harley Davidson, for example. If you now think manufacturers use wheel size to create stability, that's only a small part of it. The real thing where manufacturers have a big influence comes at the end. Because one thing is clear, gyroscopic rigidity is physics. And of course, all manufacturers have to deal with the same physics. But not all manufacturers have to deal with the same geometry. And now we find out in real life how much these forces actually help at different speeds. For that, I was steering my motorcycle at different speeds to find out when counter steering still works and when it doesn't. Between 5 and 10 km per hour, it's obviously no counter steering. I steer with pure steering geometry. Between 10 and 15 km per hour, steering already feels different but it's still not counter-steering. But between 15 and 20 km per hour, steering just feels so weird. It's not counter-steering, but it's also not pure steering geometry. And above 20 km per hour, it's counter-steering. That rock-solid stability you feel at 100 km per hour completely gone when you're crawling along. And unfortunately, I know this from experience because I once tipped over at walking speed. At around 10 km per hour, your invisible gyroscopic helper checks out. The wheels just aren't spinning fast enough to create any stabilizing effect. At that point, it's almost entirely up to you. Your balance, your body movements, your tiny steering corrections. But the good news, there's another way to stabilize your motorcycle. One that even works at very low speeds. Geometry. Now we come to the part where you'll finally see why motorcycles behave so differently. For that, we only need one tool. A set square. Okay, maybe a larger one. This you will do. Here's the steering axis. And there's the point where the motorcycle wheel touches the ground, the contact patch. I just hold the set square there so that you can see where the steering axis hits the ground. And the distance between that point and the contact patch is the trail. I know this is not the most precise set square in the world, but the angle between the steering axis and the vertical line to the contact patch is the rake angle. For understanding why trail works, I've got this. That's a motorcycle tire from above and that's the road. The rear wheel of the motorcycle would be somewhere here. The orange cross is the point where the steering axis intersects the ground and the red cross is the point where the motorcycle tire touches the ground, the contact patch. And the distance between the two of them is the trail. And when we're steering, it would look like this. And by the way, this happens all the time. Tiny movements, just when we're riding along because of bumps on the road, for example. And then I'm exaggerating now, the motorcycle wheel is like this and a force comes into play. For example, rolling resistance force. And this force is acting on the contact patch, the red cross. And it's really important to notice that it's acting on the contact patch and not the orange cross, the intersection of the steering axis and the ground. Because then when it's acting on the red cross, 
the force straightens the front wheel so that it is like this again. And this straightening effect is the stabilizing effect of the trail. And this also explains why trail also has a stabilizing effect at lower speeds because rolling resistance is always the same and it doesn't change for the speed. And this is exactly where manufacturers play with geometry to give each bike its unique personality. More trail makes a bike more stable and straight line oriented, but also slower to turn. Less trail makes for quick nimble steering, but also makes the bike feel twitchier at higher speeds. Sport bikes, for example, use a shorter trail and steeper rake for agility, but then add steering dampers to keep things stable. A cruiser or touring bike, on the other hand, has a longer trail, so it's rock steady on the highway, but handles heavily in tight turns. At high speeds, your bike balances itself, and at low speeds, it gives control back to you. Understanding this isn't just interesting, it also makes you a better rider. Ride safe and trust the physics.